Hello and welcome to part two of this quick start guide walkthrough brought to you by Tech Tutorials by Kyle. Uh, we're starting here with lesson five, which is basic functions, and we're introduced to the syntax, uh, the two different ways to declare functions. Uh, here we have this one, function foo, and then we can also use uh, variable or var to uh, instantiate a function and then it says create a function called my function and use whichever syntax um, I recommend that you never use this syntax right here the var it's just makes things a lot more complicated than it should be so here we go we're just gonna go function my function opening close parenthesis and that says it doesn't have to do anything opening close curly brace alright uh, J, uh, JavaScript is scoped by functions and not by block. Uh, if you're not familiar, then just yeah, don't worry really about it. Worry about it. Um, if we define a variable um, in a function, it will not be available outside the function. And then, if we declare a variable outside the function, though, uh, we will be able to use it inside a function. So here we have examples. All right. This function tries to set the foo to be the value specified. Uh, foo is declared in a function. It is not accessible outside of the function. All right. Now that we are outside of the function, foo is not defined, and the program will crash. Fix this by moving the declaration of foo outside the function. Uh, make sure that set foo will still update the value of foo. Alright, so then we're going to go var foo, declare it, then we do the function foo is equal to val inside the function. And then the alert will give us our number. Alright, uh, return keyword finishes the execution of the function. Uh, if no return value is specified, the return value is undefined. All right, now I have a function. If the value is falsy and not a string, return undefined. Otherwise, return good input. Uh, note that this means an empty string uh, should return good input. So we have an if statement here. If not value, which text tests, tests if it's falsy, then we have the ands. And value is not equal to an empty string. Then we do return undefined. And then else return good input. All right. Excuse my internet. Okay. Uh, some more on strings. Uh, both of these declarations work. You can use either single or double quotations. Uh, we should use, it tells us we should use single more often though. Concatenation, um, just like variables that store numbers, uh, variables that store strings can also use the plus symbol to uh, what's called concatenate it, which will add these two strings together, which will make baz, it'll store foobar inside of it. And then we can use the dot length thing as we saw in like the very first lesson. Um, we can use dot length to find out the length and then store it inside of a variable alright store, store the length of baz inside baz length so we go var baz length is equal to baz dot length and here we have the find and replace uh, as we learned about before in a prior course um, foo foo dot replace foo which is the word we're going to replace and then bar which is what we're going to replace it with. Now use replace to update the variable str by replacing world with Ryan. So we go str is equal to str dot replace. We're replacing world with Ryan. Uh, index uh, checks if a string contains a given string that we gave inside and then if it doesn't contain it it returns negative one 
So for example, bar is a substring in bar baz and has an index of zero. Because as you remember, the first letter is represented by zero. Uh, bar baz dot index of baz is three since baz starts after the third character. All right. Modify the following function according to the comments. Uh, return true if substr is the substring of str. So we go if str dot index of sub str is greater than or equal to zero. Return true, else return false. All right. Next lesson. And here we all have a bunch of numbers. Uh, it just tells us about syntax and not a number and all that. Okay, add 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and check out the results. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. And we see we get this really odd 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. Uh, this has to do with floating point yeah, arithmetic. Uh, don't worry about it. Just remember that you can't really use precise math in programming languages. A uh, common way to deal is to scale things. So we have a first and a second number. So let's make us a third variable, which we will store first plus second inside of. And then we're going to get that variable multiplied by 100. And then we use math.round to round it. And then the final variable sum will be equal to uh, poo divided by 100. And there we go. All right, NAN, not a number, is also very confusing. Uh, the result of some invalid arithmetic, such as dividing by zero, is NAN. Or sorry, zero divided by zero, although five divided by zero is infinity. All right, uh, check the type of NAN. at will return with number, which is weird. Not a number is a number. Now try typing NAN is equal to NAN. All right. Turns to false. So how do you check if the result of an operation is not a number? Um, the isNAN function tells you if the argument is NAN. So we go isNAN 0 divided by 0. All right, that concludes the second part of this course. Uh, please continue on to the third video.